Election season is officially here, but there's already been one special election, that's CD8 here in Arizona. Joining me to break it down is Stan Barnes from Copper State Consulting Group. Let's talk about this race, because Debbie Lesko wins this race, what would most consider a pretty easy victory with a six-point margin. But the talk is the Democrats are taking a lot of confidence from this because the president won it by 20 points, Romney by 25. What do you make of all that? Yeah, how you view this depends on where you sit. If you're a Republican, you say, hey, we have a Republican in Congress from the West Valley. That's what we expect. And she's likely to be there the rest of her natural life if she wants to be because it's that kind of district and she's that kind of person. Right. She's perfectly suited for it. But my Democratic friends are saying, and they're not wrong, that perception means a lot and it's all about November. And they can sell this, vic this loss, this narrow loss, as something worthy of bringing more money into their side of the equation and even better candidates nationally because it's still forming up nationally in terms of who's running for what on, in the congressional side. So is there, how much of that is reality? Because if I were to leave my job in radio and television and run against Ruben Gallego, I'm never beating Gallego in that district. But if I keep it under 10 points, does that mean that the, the Democrats are weak? <laughs> no, I, this is a, such a great political science experiment right here. I, people like you and me, we opine about this stuff all the time. But then you put a real candidate like Dr. Tip, Dr. Tippinini in that race with $800,000, right. which is a miracle that she could raise that much money. And, and then you give voters a real political science experiment. It turns out voters like choices and can be persuaded by personalities, and they vote for who they like as much as what people stand for because we're humans, and that's the nature of it. If you ran against Ruben Gallego, you'd do very well, but you wouldn't win. Right. And then we would all thump our chest and say, Ruben, Congressman Gallego, it just ain't as tough as he looks on paper. And that's that's what we would do, and that's what Democrats are doing to Debbie Lesko. And you don't, you can't fault them because there is going to be a primary. We don't know if, if, if Debbie Lesko is going to face a primary opponent. Probably not. Okay. But she's probably going to face a Democrat in November, and they want to fundraise. And they say, hey, listen, if in this short window we got six, imagine what we can do between now and November. But more importantly, Kirsten Cinema is already running ads for the open seat when Jeff Flake leaves. She's going to be a tough candidate. And if they believe nationally that Democrats are stronger in Arizona than they perceive, that could really help cinema raise a lot of money, couldn't it? You're right on point. This is the phenomenon of 2018 that did not exist in 2016 or 2014. Democrats have confidence. And what that means is better candidates come into the game and more money chases those candidates. And voters get a different turnout and a different aspect and don't behave the way guys like you and me think they might behave. This is really about the U.S. Senate in, in many respects. Uh, my Democratic friends don't really think they're going to win the governorship because Arizona remains a center-right state. But the U.S. Senate race is a different animal, and there's going to be so much money chase that race on behalf of Congresswoman Cinema, based in part on the fact that Debbie Lesko only won by five points, to drive your point home. And I think that she, with Kirsten Cinema, she's established... And I, it's funny because I get along so well with her. We've done some veterans work together, which I think makes her more formidable because here I am in conservative talk radio and I've got compliments for Kirsten Cinema. She has something like that to the people that are center right, but not far right, that they, she could convince a lot of people that she's a good person for that. And if she convinces people outside of the state that that's a winnable race, those dollars are going to really be helpful. Yeah, to that's the thing I keep harping on. That's the cascading effect. If people believe, then things happen. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. And right now, people believe Kirsten Cinema can win that U.S. Senate race. People being national people. Right. And and this is number one or number two on the target list if Democrats are going to take the U.S. Senate. Right? Nevada and Arizona, those two Republican seats. And so Cinema is going to have more money than anyone has ever had in a U.S. Senate race. More. And, and what can she do with that? And that's the issue is I th when I look at that, because the opposite is also true. You may really like somebody and believe in them, but if you watch the fundraising leading up to things, they're not raising money, they're not polling well. Unless you're family or close friends, you're not throwing good money after bad in a race. They've got to prove viability early. Kirsten Sinema is always, already running the Senate campaign ads where there's this tough primary going with three people for the Republicans. And um, I don't know, I mean, I wouldn't bet that she's going to win, but she's got a better shot than anybody in a long time is in the Democratic Party. Yeah, I mean, ever since Dennis DeCancini so long ago, you're right, she does. A lot of smart money thinks she is going to be the winner. But then there's the Trump factor in the November 2018 election. 
um, and how that plays, how Martha McSally, who will probably be the nominee for Republicans, how she behaves in that phenomenon space. I mean, what will Trump, what role will he play? Will, will Martha put her hand up and be a little distant from him, or will she embrace him? Well, how will cinema play that? I mean, that's Trump's going to be in this race, too. Yep. The whole thing's going to be a referendum on Trump. And that's what scares Republicans, too, is not that he's hard to explain, which sometimes he is, but it might bring somebody off the couch that doesn't normally vote. It might feel like a presidential race, not an, a midterm right. race. All right, so last question, put you on the spot. Uh, what are the chances Democrats take back the House? And you just mentioned two races for Republicans, but eight of the top ten races in the Senate that are up for grabs are Democrats. Can the Republicans pick up seats? Do they lose the Senate? Do they lose the House? How do you think it plays yeah, out? Yeah, I think we hold, we being Republicans, hold the majority in the Senate because of all the dynamics you, you portrayed and more. And believe it or not, I think we hold the House too. And in the end, I, the reason I think that is because, it, so we haven't said this yet, it comes down to the individual candidates themselves. That's what really makes the difference in this deal. And uh, on the net, I think we're going we're gonna to lose a few, because that's the way it is, but we're going to hold the House. You can save this tape, and we'll okay, run it in November. It. We'll do it. So you want to make good television? You bring on somebody smarter than you. That's what I did here, Stan. Thanks for coming yeah, down. It, we'll be back.